Hi, this is Evan with part two of the YouTube video about building a grinder and milling attachment to mount on the cross slide uh, of my lathe. The first half is perhaps somewhat mundane, just building the mounting system using a spigot, uh, using pretty standard turning methods. The second part where we'll see now is turning the um, ER32 collet itself. And I did have a problem keeping that concentric and I had to turn it again. So I'm going to show you both parts, the initial construction and then the modification I had to make, which is kind of interesting, I think. It had used a rather novel technique to make it concentric. So let's see how it goes. So this is a rough sketch of the thing we're going to make. And this has a hole through the center, 14 millimeters in diameter to exactly fit the shaft of the motor. And it's at least one grub screw there holding the collet holder onto the shaft to prevent it from slipping off. And at the other end of that hole, we have a taper turned to match the ER32 collets. On the outside, we have a thread which matches the ER32 uh, collet nut that I showed previously. This is an M40 diameter, 40 millimeters diameter, 1.5 millimeter pitch, and the thread needs to be about 15 millimeters long. So that's what we're going to do next. So the first thing we're going to need is the dimensions of the collet. Unfortunately, I found this online at arcurotrade.co.uk. And this marks a 32 millimeter diameter, which uh, gives the ER32 collet its name. And the other thing we need to know is the angle. And I calculated that was 8 degrees half angle or 16 degrees included angle. And that agrees with the specifications. There is another diameter at 33 millimeters at the tip of the cone, outside of the cone at the front, uh, which goes inside the nut. And that's a little bit bigger than the 32 millimeters. Otherwise, that slight slope on the front is 30 degrees, but we don't need that since we already have a nut. I happen to have this uh, 40 millimeter diameter bar, which was probably the axle or a drive shaft for a boat, I think originally. And it's too big to fit inside the spindle and it's also too big to fit inside the bore of the chuck. So I can't uh, put it in any further. And here I'm using a fixed steady that was given to me by a friend in Wellington to, to keep the uh, bar centered while I drill a center hole. And after that, I can use a center in the tailstock to keep it steady. The steady has a convenient gate you can open up to expose the work, like so. And we can remove it. See there's a pyramid on the back of the lathe bed and there's a V on the bottom of the steady which locks into that to keep it aligned correctly. And the one that's closest to me is just a flat plate that it lies on. And it has this uh, clamp that comes up from underneath to keep it in place and keep it uh, strongly bolted down. And now it's been removed and we're using the center, live center in the back. So the next thing we have to do is cut a thread and we'll need to set up the gear train. The gear on the right hand side on the lead screw is 56 teeth, which is actually the standard gear for the um, boxwood gear train. And now we're taking a 48 tooth gear and that will be placed in the stud gear position, which we'll see here. Have that screw in the end of the stud gear to, uh, shaft to stop it from slipping inside the the head. In the bottom of this image, you can see the co compound gears. So, the 48 tooth stud gear drives a 127 tooth gear, which is connected to an 80 tooth gear, which then drives a 56 tooth gear on the lead screw, and that's the conversion needed to produce metric threads on the imperial lathe. This has all been set up using RideTheGearTrain.com, which is my software for uh, gear train calculations online. I have this little red box which contains a whole lot of um, tools that I found the ground by hand for cutting 55 degree threads for British Standard Whitworth thread definition or 60 degrees for all the metric and UNC threads. And so I need to choose one of these and check that the angle is correct and then mount it appropriately. These diamond shaped uh, carbide inserts are 55 degrees, which would have been handy for BSW, but uh, no good for all the modern threads. And so I'm going to use one of the high speed steel ground tools and mount it in the tool holder. 
I'll need to adjust that to bring it to the right center height and I usually use the light center in the tailstock to do that. At this point I've made a scratch pass, covered the surface in purple dye and then done a scratch pass to make it really easy to see and then I'm using a pitch gauge to check that the pitch is correct at 1.5 millimeters and it was so the gear train was set up correctly. Now in this drone's eye view there's a pretty obvious rookie mistake here. It's normal to rotate the uh, compound slide around to 30 degrees angle to match the thread so that as the tool is advanced it's cutting on the left hand side of the tool and the right hand side of the tool just only, only just touches the, the right surface and that means all the swarf is coming from one direction instead of coming from both sides in the V. Well I've made a common mistake here by turning the um, compound only 30 degrees instead of a full 60 degrees and different lathes made by different manufacturers have the degree marking uh, on the protractor in opposite directions so it's an easy catch. A good tip actually is to look at this view from above and you should see the edge of the compound slide lining up with the edge of the tool and here you can clearly see that it does not line up properly. However it didn't seem to make any significant difference to the thread which worked very well in the end. Here the iPhone camera is sitting on a shelf above the lathe looking down on, on top of it so it's actually very difficult to see what view it's getting until afterwards and uh, there is a dial gauge here at the very bottom of the image but you can't see it unfortunately it's clipped off and that's being used to check the depth of the thread as you're cutting. I'm making a cut here using the um, speed control of the lathe to speed up through the middle of the thread and slow down at the end and then use the same controller to round it backwards. That way I'm not disengaging the half nuts. I find that much easier than just messing around with half nuts. You can just wind it back, especially for a short thread like this. But when you change direction from going to the right to moving to the left, you have to make sure that you take up the slack in the gears in the carriage so that you don't uh, get the tool out of line with the groove and that you're, you're trying to cut. You can see in this picture there's a thread dial gauge uh, on the bottom right corner of the image but I'm not using that because in fact you're not allowed to remove the um, or disengage the half nuts when you're cutting metric threads on an imperial lathe and that's the, the main reason why I'm using the method of winding backwards but I also find it convenient. And each time I want to rewind I have to draw the tool back out of the thread. If you try to leave it engaged in the thread it'll run back along a different path and damage the thread so you have to wind it, wind it away from the thread while you wind backwards which you would normally do anyway. And then wind it back in and I started by setting the dials to zero with the tool just touching the surface of the work. When I, before I cut, did any thread cutting, I had the tool touching the uh, surface of the work and made sure that the adjustable micrometer dials on the cross slide and compound slide were both on zero and that gave me a starting point for monitoring the depth of thread. Some people prefer to have the zero point set to the end point of the thread when it's at its right depth and that's an alternative way of doing it. The dial gauge which is out of view in the center bottom of the image is measuring how far the tool post has moved forwards at a right angle to the center line of the work and that can be used for measuring the thread depth. An alternative way is to calculate how far you have to advance the compound slide at its 30 or 60 degree angle uh, in order to get, get the correct depth. Another way is just to keep cutting until you've removed nearly all of the dye that you can see on the surface and then trying it with a nut and, and taking a bit more off until it fits. That's a sloppy way of doing it I guess. I'm making very light gentle cuts because this is quite hard stainless steel and I don't want to get a ragged surface that you might get if you make a very deep cut. Notice too that when I rewind towards the right I go well past the end of the thread so that when I change direction again and move to the left 
there's time for the motor to take up the slack and all the gears in the in the in the uh, carriage and uh, line up again with the thread groove. Next we drill a series of holes through the centre starting with a 6mm drill and expanding out to 14mm uh, for the main centre hole and then we'll need to do the tapered hole for the collet to fit into. Unfortunately my iPhone camera ran out of memory so I didn't get any footage of the actual boring of the main hole and also the taper. Uh, to do the taper I just turned the compound uh, slide around to 8 degrees and bought it at an angle and uh, came out fitting the collet very well. Finally we're at the stage where we can test it with an end mill and the milling attachment mounted directly on the cross slide after removing the compound slide. This is a fixed height so I'm not able to alter the height of the tool but it does line up pretty well with the center line of the lathe. So I'm using the end mill here to face off a little bit of this brass to see how it looks. Well the end point was rather disappointing. I've got a chatter um, across the surface here which I wasn't expecting and on closer inspection I decided that the tool wasn't quite concentric. It wasn't so much that the 14 millimeter hole through the center of the collet was actually off center, it was just that it was actually slightly loose and when you do up the grub screw then it goes off center. So I bored out the 14 millimeter hole a little bit too big, the shaft itself was actually marginally below 14 millimeters. So that was the problem and to solve this problem I decided I had to rebore that 14 millimeter hole, hole out to a larger size and insert a bronze bush and then rebore that. And then the question is how to make that concentric. So here's the interesting solution. I placed a piece of scrap bar in the three jaw chuck and then placed a collet over it. And the idea then is to place the collet holder over the top of the collet and clamp it onto the bar so that the collet holder is concentric with the actual collet. And then I could bore the other end out to the correct size. I turned the shaft to the appropriate size for the collet I wanted to use but also in this process I'm making sure that the surface of this bar is now concentric with the lathe. Quite good there. Hmm, tough round. <laughs> 
After the collet holder had been bought out to a larger size, a bronze bush was made with the same outside diameter to be a tight fit in the collet holder and after it was completed it was pushed into the collet holder and bored out. Because of the small size a boring bar was not available so a high speed steel tool was ground to act as a boring tool. It was necessary to cut away a relief curve on the side and underside of the tool to prevent it from rubbing on the hole that was being bored. This can make the tool weaker so that it can bend or flex when it's under load and that can alter the accuracy of the bore size so very light cuts are necessary. Here we see the modified collet holder and motor mounted on a vertical slide ready for mounting on the lathe. To demonstrate the use of the vertical slide with the milling tool on it, we're going to make a hexagonal nut. And to do this, I'm using a dividing system that has been described in a previous video using a circular saw blade mounted on the back of the spindle. And by turning it around four clicks, we can rotate the work by 60 degrees, ready for the next cut of the hexagon. The circular saw blade is clamped in position with this brass clamping system to prevent it from moving while milling because that will certainly make the tool jam. The lathe motor has a pulse width modulated speed controller on it and this was arranged so that the millant motor could be plugged into the speed controller instead of the lathe motor and that way I could control the voltage and speed of this DC motor. And here's the finished product which is a special nut for a tangy steam engine requiring a BSW profile thread, 19 threads per inch and 1 and 3 8 inch diameter.